Hello, hello, hello. Up to this point, we've been working in REPL IT, and REPL IT is awesome. I can't really say anything but great things about it. But REPL IT has its limitations. So one of the limitations of REPL IT is you don't have multiple files. In larger programs in C, you will need to build your programs in small pieces. And you know, anytime you do large programs, you're, you are going to need multiple files. So there are several tools that you need and my recommendation is to get these tools. So the tools that you will need, first of all, you need a editor. Now you can get Notepad++ if that's what you prefer. Personally, I have uh, really began to like Visual Studio Code and not so much because of the syntax, but even though that's pretty awesome too and all the plugins that it has, I mean, Visual Studio Code is really awesome but one of the things is that i can open my folders and view all my files and configure my settings so one of the first things you you'll want to do is go out and get visual studio code so for example you can go out on the internet and just google visual studio code now, the, uh, the awesome thing about Visual Studio Code is that you don't just have uh, Visual Studio Code for Windows. I'm using Windows 10, but in actuality, you can get Visual Studio Code for whatever. Okay, I think I clicked the wrong. Visual Studio Code. So you can get Visual Studio Code for uh, Linux as well as Windows and I believe you can also get it for Mac OS. Yes, you can get it for Mac OS. So regardless of where uh, What environment you're in you can download Visual Studio Code for any of these Okay, it's it may be a little bit different from one to the other I'm not going to demonstrate how to download Visual Studio Code and how to install it It's very simple. You download it. You go through the prompts and you install it no problem there. So that's the first step you have to do to install Visual Studio Code. The next thing you want to do is you need a compiler. So one of the things that you need to download is a good compiler. And in my case, uh, I can get one for Windows. If you have Mac OS or Linux, you might already have the compiler for Mac OS or Linux. So C compiler for Linux, for example. And so you can, you come up with all these and you have the GCC compiler in Mac or Linux. So I'm doing it in Windows. If you have Windows, uh, you can see how I compile and build programs. Uh, but if you don't have that, if you have GCC, you can use this. Now, what I'm using for Windows is I'm using MinGW uh, compiler. And that gets, that's pretty easy. You just go down and download, and here you see the download installer, which takes you to SourceForge. And in SourceForge, it'll begin downloading the file. And once it downloads the file, you can go ahead and install. Once you get to a certain point of installation, it will ask you what features you want, and you can select what features you can, you want to select. So, once you do that, another thing is once you install it, and let's close this for now. Once you install MinGW, it will install by default, and I think you can change the location, but in my case, it goes straight to the C drive in the bin. Now, you are going to have to use the, the compiler from the command line, and the compiler is the Oh, look, it has GCC. So what command did I use earlier? Oh, so I am using the GCC commands. So you download and you will execute this command. Now it has a lot of executables and a lot of DLLs in here. And so in order for the command line to understand what you're doing, so in my case, for example, I can do this and it knows where to go. Typically, in order to run a, an executable, 
uh, it will not necessarily run from the command line unless it's in the path variable. The path variable can be found in your, let's go to uh, control panel and you go to the control panel and this is the same thing on Windows 7. You go to the control panel and you go to system and in system you go to advanced settings and in settings you will go to environment variables and you look for system environment variables and you look for the path. Now there is a difference in Windows 7 and Windows 10 when you add additions to the path. Now in, in Windows 10, it's really nice. They've improved the feature and you can see everything separated. However, in Windows 7, what you will actually see will be something like this. Let me open up Notepad so I can demonstrate. So instead of seeing what you're seeing in my case, you will see, for example, something like this, C slash, let's see what the pro program data slash Oracle slash Java slash Java path. And I'm just copying the first element there and then a, sem a semicolon and then the next thing you'll see something like percent system root, which is a variable, percent system 32, and so on. And you will see all those. So what you want to do is, in, in the case if you have Windows 10, is you want to go ahead and edit that variable and add your entry for minw. So in that case, all you have to do is take this and copy it and when you edit, you add this to, you can add it anywhere in the path. You can add it at the beginning, you can add it at the end. And then if it, you add it at the beginning or in the middle somewhere, you have to make sure that you separate it from other variables by using the semicolon. So you do that. Now in my case, it's a little bit different. I'm not going to save this. And in my case, a little bit different and it just, I just add an entry, which is a lot nicer and I can see my entry here. Click OK, click OK. And once I do that, I start up my command line and the command line in Windows 7 is also not as good as the one in Windows 10. I can now run compiler commands. Now, to run a compiler command, for example, I have my hello world here, my main C, and it's the what you've seen up to this point. So I can navigate to my directory and a quick primer on navigating the command line, if you haven't done it, it's very simple. So you have some very simple commands. So if you want to navigate the command line, let's say, for example, let's clear all of this. And let's say that it dropped me off at C users. Uh, C users, okay. Let's see, C users. Let's just say it drops us there. Wherever it dropped us, I can get back to uh, the the root by simply saying cd. And dot dot brings me up one directory, but I can also say cd and it brings me back to C drive. That brings me to the root of the location. Now my program is, my program files are saved in cd. I created a folder, cd and I create a folder named dev and I called it C sandbox. And notice that I have, um, that I'm able to tab over. So if I do this, so if I say CD slash dev and I can put D, it'll tab over. And then I can say C sandbox and tab over and that system information, I don't want that. I can't keep tabbing through, so I don't want that. C dev, C, and let's put the S, O. And you know, one of the things about it, let's just go to C dev and C, and I have a space. When you have a space, you need to use the um, double quotes. And so it brings me to C sandbox. And now in C sandbox, I can view what's in C sandbox by using the DIR command. And I can use DIR slash P if I really had a long directory, that way it won't uh, navigate the entire directory and it goes off the screen. So, but I can just do DIR and it will show me the file. So I know I have a hello world application there. So I have hello world and I navigate to hello world and I say CD hello world. And now I'm there. 
So now I can view the files that I have here and I have a hello exe because I already compiled this. So now if I want to compile my hello world, I can just simply say GCC. And if I'm ever in that, I can say GCC help. And it shows me all the help, but this is pretty cryptic. So I didn't really understand a lot of these things the way. So I looked at an example offline, online and just figured out how to do it because this doesn't seem to even provide what I'm looking for. So there it is, O and file, place the output file. Well, it doesn't say much. It says dash O and file. Um, that didn't help. So anyway, so let's clear this. And the command that I ran, and I'm looping through my commands by hitting the up arrow, and the up arrow is showing me the commands that I previously entered. So in this case, I don't want to do um, my string, so I'm going to do GCC with a parameter dash O. And then I want to compile my hello world. So, and then I just say, but because my hello world, if you notice, is actually in, actually it's in main C, and that's what this file is, main C. So what I want to do is I want to say GCC dash O, right? Let's go back to it so we can cheat. And the second, the, this parameter will tell it the name of the executable. Now, if you're in a Linux or, or, or Unix box, typically there's no such thing as EXE. It doesn't really care. In Windows, typically if it's an executable, you need EXE. In those other applications, then you don't do this. You don't even bother with the extension. You just can name it string. But in my case, I named it string EXE. And I have, I am telling it that I want to compile main C. Okay, I don't want that because actually what I want is main C. Main dot C. Main, uh, oh, sorry. Hello dot EXE and I want to compile main C. Now, if I had additional files, I would just keep adding files here and go all the way down until I have all my files and it'll compile. So when I do that, it compiles, it gives me no errors. If it gives me errors, then I have to go back and check what the errors are. When I view my directory, you will notice that it created a hello exe just like I told it. So now I can actually run the hello exe world, which is just gonna print hello. And there it is. So it prints it. But one thing I haven't talked about is, okay, let's talk about Visual Studio Code. So why do I like Visual Studio Code? Well, Visual Studio Code, after you install it, it has tons of plugins. And so one of the things that you can do, for example, and I don't know why I'm having trouble with my directories, but let's just go to my CDEB. Let's say that I want to create, I have my C sandbox, and let's say I have a new project. So I can create my new project and just say hey, new project folder. Um, and I name it, um, let's just call it uh, the tutorial on functions. So we name it functions tutorial. What I can do from here, since I selected the options, and this is what you have to look out for when you are installing Visual Studio Code, you can actually add context menu to it and it can say open with code and it will open that directory with Visual Studio Code and I'm already there. Once I am in Visual Studio Code, you can see where I see my files and here is my functions tutorial. I can simply add, I can go here, add a new file and I can name it whatever I want. Typically we want main.c, right? So we name it main.c and main.c is ready to I execute. I have settings turned on to automatically save the file. So let's say, for example, we have our usual include stdio.h. We create our main.
and we do that. And if we do that now, one of the things that you may notice is, ooh, it didn't say, it didn't do it. You notice here in Visual Studio Code that, that it's telling me that I have a one. What does that mean? It means that I have a file that's not saved. Now I can go to file save here and save my file or I can just hit control S and see that goes away. But there's something wrong with this and it doesn't pick it up, but that's okay. Oh, it wants to do two. Okay, so we do that. Control C. Now I go back to my command line and in my command line, Remember, this is no longer Hello World, so now I have to go back one directory so I can do dot dot and it brings me up one. And then I can go into functions and I hit my tab and it takes me there. I can view my files by typing DIR and it shows me that I have a main C. So in order to compile main C, I can just simply say GCC dash O, the file of my executable, and I can say Hello Code. and I want to compile my main.c and it tells me I have an error so here you can see where I try to compile and similar to REPL IT it tells me hey you got something wrong here what is wrong warning missing terminating character I'm missing a terminating character in line 5 so what is going on here so let's see we have printf so it might be complaining about not returning 0 so I, I don't know. So return zero because it's supposed to return something. So I save it and I run the command again. Let's see if that takes care of it. So, oh, typo. Control save, go back. And there you go. I have no errors this time. And now you can see that when I do the AR, you can see my hello exe there. And it also shows up on my uh, Visual Studio Code. So now in order to run it, I can run it right from the command line. I can say hello code.exe and it runs. Now if you're in a Linux environment, you would have to actually do dot slash and then run it. And that would give you the permission to run the test file. So you say dot slash hello code and then run it. So that's it for now. I think we've covered enough and uh, so uh, I think we have covered enough. And the reason that I'm doing this video and preparing you because the upcoming tutorials, you will be doing file IO, which means you're gonna be reading from a file and writing to a file. And you have that limitation in REPL IT. You cannot do that because that is not your environment. You're on the cloud. So you can't read files from their file system. So in the tutorials that are coming up, you will need to have a compiler, an editor, and you will have to have them configured so that you can run your code from the command line. And we are going to be touching on other things. So we are also going to be touching on command line arguments, command line parameters, and how they work. We're going to be doing file IO, and we are going to do multi-file programs, which means files that actually are composed of more than one file. So thanks for watching. Until next time, if you like this video, Go ahead and subscribe and you have more videos coming up. Thanks for watching.